Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to create some shiny surfaces. Today is the Kane Kale Show, episode 372, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Ken Lafferty. Yes, as I said, today we're going to be featuring Splatoon. And we're going to be jumping right into our PSD here. We're going to be getting some results like this, going from the beginning masks, from this to this, from this to this. And I'm going to show you how to create shiny surfaces, as well as how to differentiate what makes it look shiny and what makes it look matte. Uh, this could be called material rendering, all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and just jump right into it, okay? So the first thing that you're going to notice is that we have all of our layers all just nicely set up. And we have right here our light mask, which is actually a clipping mask. We've learned about this in the previous episodes. A clipping mask is something where you create a layer and then you clip it back to basically the boundaries of the layer behind it. In this case, it's the hair. But that's okay. We're going to go ahead and just declip this or we're going to unclip it. And uh, let's go ahead and turn it off. You can see the mess that happens when you unclip it. Let's go ahead and create a new one. So you should be at this point with your drawing. Create a new layer and just call it Shannon if you'd like. And then hold Alt and click between these two layers. As I said, this is going to turn it into a clipping mask and it's going to allow you to shade things. Now you can go through here and begin lighting your character as normal, as this is what I would suggest that you do from the beginning. Go ahead and light it as you normally would. Now in this case, we're going to be working with a light source that's coming from the top left, top left of the piece, so we can easily begin shading in areas like this. Shading in areas like that, okay? Easy peasy. Everyone's done this type of stuff before. Nothing new here. But now, the real trick comes into play when you want to start adding in your lights, your, or rather your speculars. The speculars is what makes things look shiny. It's a fancy term for things looking shiny, specular. Now, what is a specular? A specular is nothing more than uh, a very shiny or wet surface that is collecting a lot of the, a lot of the light source and it's reflecting it with 100% intensity straight back into your eyeballs. Whereas something like cloth, let's go ahead and demonstrate this. Something like cloth, um, and, and oh yeah, a little tip, a little tip that you can do for this is that for the light, I would highly recommend that you hue shift it. See how we have purple here? Try not to make your light just a straight purple. Let's hue shift it like more towards like these greens and blues. This will make a really interesting looking specular. Okay, so let's go ahead and go like this. Okay, so let's say that our light is collecting right in here. This is, as I said, the light hits these shiny or wet surfaces and it reflects it back into your eyeballs with 100% intensity and it causes it to have this very, very bright look. Okay, now this is step one. So this is kind of you going through your piece and asking yourself, where would the greatest amounts of light be reflecting back into my eyes? And this is gonna take a little bit of practice. However, here's a good way that you can get started with it. If you'll notice that even just getting started with this specular, you can see a pattern forming. And the pattern is that there's a line that's happening. There's a line where the specular kind of gravitates towards. Do you notice that? It changes a little bit with the geometry with this tentacle hair, as you can see. But for the most part, there is a pattern. There always is a pattern within uh, your speculars. So always watch out for that. Be watching out for that. Let's continue. Wait, what the heck am I? What the heck am I doing here? Where is the rather, uh, where's the proper layer? There we go. Okay, now, as I was saying, so yeah, we have this line that kind of goes through and it can help dictate where our uh, specular is going to appear. And you'll see a little bit of stuff kind of get caught in these areas. Go ahead and throw in a little bit there, but because it's off of the beaten path, take it easier. Take it a little bit easier, okay? Here's another really cool tip. You'll throw in stuff. I'm using the soft round brush here. Sorry for the person honking in the background. Hopefully you can't hear that, but <laughs> regardless, you got the soft round brush, right? But then you'll notice how it just kind of looks okay. You might make it kind of larger and you're doing your speculars like this. Try to keep them tight. Keep your speculars tight and very deliberate with your uh, shapes, okay? So the way that you can do this is by, make sure you've got your eraser kind of uh, selected there, and you can kind of pull in your speculars. You can pull in your speculars. This is what I'm talking about. See how it is much more deliberate with your uh, design there. And let's go ahead and go for something a little bit more like that. Yes, that looks good. Looks very, very good. Okay. Oh, but here's the other thing is that to soften the edge, grab 
a transitionary color that will help to sort of bring in or box in this shape that you've decided on. Okay, now what this will do is again, it will help you to create a very deliberate looking specular and it will help to make things look really, really nice. Okay, really, really nice. Okay, cool. Now that is what we call a good looking specular. And you can see it's just kind of slapped down, nothing too crazy. It's mostly just kind of trying to get us to the point where we like what we're looking at, okay? So I can look at this and I, I say that it's okay, but there's some issues that are happening here. We've gone a little too willy-nilly with it in, in a couple areas. Can you see where they are? Yes, you should be able to see pretty easily. It's here and here. See how the line is like uninterrupted even though there's a huge amount of geometry that's changing on the tentacle here? So what we're gonna do is we're going to just take our eraser and we're gonna go ahead and just erase this away. Erase this away from the edges where it would normally kind of disappear. Okay, let's kind of tone this down a tad bit. Okay, and then we might end up with something more like this. And you can see here that I'm actually shading. You can divide these layers up into multiple segments. In fact, that might not be a terrible idea. See how I've got the shadows on one layer and then I'm also putting the speculars on another. Uh, another way that you can do this is, let's say I'll demonstrate it over here on this hair. Go ahead and shade the hair first in a way that looks okay to you, like this. Then create yourself a new layer and have this one be the specular. Don't forget to clip it back as well. Clip it back, we'll call this shine again, okay? Now where is the light gonna be reflected right here? It's probably gonna be reflecting right here, right here, but then you might say, okay, this looks okay, Keenan, but it doesn't look super reflective. We're missing something. We're missing something that is very crucial, and that is the reflected light of the atmosphere. There's all of this background color, all these background teals that should be also be reflecting off the edges of these tentacles. Now watch what happens when I add this in. This is as simple as taking a soft round brush and just lightly pressing to add in a bit of this teal. Lightly press it to add in a bit of the teal. You don't want it to be too crazy, otherwise it's like, it, it looks too, <laughs> it's too intense, okay? We need to lower the intensity. So press lightly, then go ahead and alt-click that to grab that color, and just start laying that in on the edges. And watch as your tentacle hair becomes oh so shiny. It becomes oh so shiny and oh so voluminous. And you can be really subtle with it too. Like you can put it up here and you can add it in like in these areas. And these subtleties are really what's gonna push your hair or push your shiny surfaces. You're not always gonna be working with tentacle hair, but it is what is going to push your surfaces to the next level. It's gonna push your shiny surfaces to the next level. So let's go ahead and take what we've learned here and let's begin, uh, let's go ahead and turn these off and on. So this is where we started. This is where we are now. See how that feels like nice and wet? Feels very like living. It feels like that, that octopus flesh that we're going for. Might be kind of scary. I mean, <laughs> if you render it too realistically, it starts to get kind of scary. I, I think that Nintendo had a good, they, they found a good way to render it and still make it look very, I don't know, pleasing to the eye. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to something that isn't as shiny. In this case, it's gonna be the hoodie. Let's move down to the hoodie and light it in a way that reflects what type of material it is, something that is not as shiny. And it's gonna be as simple as this. All you have to do is grab your hoodie, select your shadow color. Notice I'm hue shifting towards blues, hue shifting towards blues. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm awesome and I've taught you guys how to do this many times. It makes your artwork look absolutely amazing every time. We're gonna go ahead and start throwing in some of these shadows. I have told you about how I like to work from shadows and then add light in first, but sometimes I like to add in shadows on top of light. In this case, I am doing the ladder. Yes, <laughs> the ladder, shadows on light. Okay, and what's cool is that you can kind of carve this away. You can carve this away to create harder cast shadows. So you might end up with something like this. Okay, but see the reason why this doesn't look as shiny as what we had before is because we haven't added in any specular. As soon as we start adding in speculars, see the same thing happens. Now all of a sudden, this looks like it's a hoodie made out of, uh, I don't know, latex or something. And the same thing here. 
watch as I add in this reflected light at the bottom. See how now that kind of completes that illusion, completes the illusion that this is like a not fabric hoodie, okay? But if we want it to feel fabric, then all we have to do is we just have to have very, very subtle transitions in our shadows, okay? Let's say we wanted to lighten up the, the lighter parts of the hoodie. Well, all you have to do is make sure that you stay nice and broad, stay with a broad uh, soft brush to light your hoodie, okay? And that's gonna bring you to this point right here, okay? See how these transitions, really it's all about the transitions. Transitions really help a lot as well. Although you might be asking, we had soft transitions up here as well, Ken. How come I don't go in there and have hard transitions everywhere? And you might be able to get away with this. You might be able to have a hard transition in all of your kind of uh, shiny surfaces. I think this can look okay, but for the most part, I actually think that introducing that, like starting with the soft transitions and then moving to the hard speculars, the hard deliberate speculars, is my personal favorite way to do this. And the reason why is because it gives visual contrast. You don't want everything to be cell shaded. You want to have soft shading and then have those hot speculars in there. Uh, same thing here on the hoodie, as we have demonstrated. Okay, now let's see. What is the last thing that I wanted to go into? Oh, yes. There is one more thing that you can do to make your speculars look even hotter. And that is you want to go up to an overpaint layer and you're going to overpaint over top of everything. Now, something that I found that's really helpful for this is setting the layer property to hard light. Now, what I want you to do is select the color of your, or select a color close to, maybe this fall off color, not the brightest color, not the brightest color of this, this specular, but the fall off color. And let's try taking our soft round brush. And again, this is on a, a layer above everything and setting to hard light and then start adding in Whoa, you can make it glow even more. Actually, let's let's grab a little bit of that actual color. But see, just a little bit of that can begin to kind of punch those speculars right into your viewer's eyeballs. And they can be really, really intense. Isn't that crazy? So that's another thing that you can do. Uh, the last thing that I want to do is I want to add in some speculars because you might be asking, how do I add in speculars on areas that are supposed to be white? So for instance, the inside of her hair. And really that comes down to using a darker color to start with. See how this is the white color of her hair, but actually the color that I've chosen is not straight white. I've taken into account the cooler colors from the background and what we've landed on is a color right around this blue. You could push it a little bit more towards teal, maybe around there. Let's go ahead and fill it like that. And that's gonna give you a good starting color. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier where I said that sometimes I like to work, or I start very, uh, I start with the shadow color and then add in the lights. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Let's go ahead and add in these lights. Oh, don't forget to clip your layer back. Otherwise, if you ever have this happen where you're starting to color and it's not working, if it's not sticking to that layer, the proper layer. Make sure you go in there and alt click between these. And that will give you the proper look. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a little bit of light. Little bit of light that's kind of like reflecting from around, right? We're considering the lights that are lighting the edges first, but then we're gonna go in there. And again, let's add in those nice hot highlights. So where would the light collect? Probably right around here probably right through here and see the line that goes through it, see the pattern that goes through it. That's because this is like a ribbon. This is a lighting form or a lighting pattern. Oh, the reason why it goes in a line, I believe is because it's called anisopatric or any, uh, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> the, the lighting effect that happens on hair and shiny surfaces that makes it appear like it's a ribbon. There's always a pattern that's kind of going through it. Any Sapatrick, I think that's what it's called. But if not, then <laughs> once again, I <laughs> look like I know what I'm talking about, but I really don't, but that's okay. The important thing is that you get it down, get it down. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that in. Let's add that in, cool. Now let's go ahead and have a little bit of light kind of gather at that edge right there. Let's kind of color that in like that, okay? 
And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. You can even add in some nice hot highlights throughout here. What this is gonna do is it's gonna cause this area or this flesh of the octopus tentacle to look like it has additional mass. It's kind of sticking out, All right? That looks quite nice. Quite nice. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And now with all of this in mind, with everything that you've learned, you should be able to get in there and very quickly just begin lighting things. Like let's say, okay, what is the, what is the shininess of this neck piece or this uh, suit piece? Let's go ahead and just play around with it. Let's go ahead and add something like this in, right? Maybe something like this would be a good start. And then say, okay, edge uh, or the surrounding color, the ambient color. Let's go ahead and add a tad bit of that in. How much is necessary? Maybe just a little bit. Just a little bit, goes a long way. And see, already, you're changing the materials, you're changing the feeling of your piece. And it's oh so fun, and I hope that you guys have yourselves a great time with that. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so that is going to end the quick tutorial today. Hope you don't mind a bit of a quicker one. I do want to focus on getting more of these out. That way you guys don't have to wait two, three weeks for every single one that goes, uh, or to get released on YouTube. As well as joining me at the end of the day, joining me for a nice cozy evening session but yeah as always i would like to urge you guys to go on to patreon and download this psd as well as all the other psds for yourself go through and check out all these layers go ahead and turn them on and off and uh, yeah dissect it for yourself because through dissection you will have learning and through learning you will be able to get better results for your own stuff so yes highly recommend that all that out of the way we're gonna go ahead and jump into some oh should i show you guys yeah, I might as well show you guys the, the time lapse. I did prepare a time lapse as well. For those of you who are interested in the actual drawing of the line art, let's go ahead and pull that up. And I'll tell you guys a bit of a story, a little bit of a story to end this off. Uh, I like to start off with some line art already set for this type of thing. Sometimes I'll begin the show doing everything live. And I do like that too, but again, for these quicker, tutorials, I wanted to jump straight into the tutorial as quickly as possible. Because I know that when I'm looking for things online, when I'm looking for art tutorials or like trying to fix something in my house, it's like <laughs> I want them to get into it as quickly as possible. And I'm like scrubbing through the video as much as possible. So um, yeah, <laughs> let me know what you guys think about the pacing of today. If it's a little bit off or if you prefer the real time ones, then uh, yeah, just let me know down in the comments. And uh, like I said, the trade-off is that hopefully I'll be able to do more of these and sort of taking the pressure off myself to like think about drawing a piece for like two to three hours for an entire episode. But anyway, that's how we got the line art done. That's how we got our mask done. Now we can leave you guys with some awesome music as well as the lovely lane. Let's go ahead and close this down. Yeah, hope you guys got some good value out of today's tutorial and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.
from all you've taken. But if we listen to each other and make our mistakes, then I can show.